Herc, Ale, another week down in the Major League Soccer season, another weekend without a victory for the LA Galaxy or even a goal for Chicharito Hernandez. Uh, Herc, I'll start with you. What has happened to the Galaxy? I thought they were going to be a better team, better team without Slatan. They are a better team. They're just not really putting up those better results. You saw against Houston, defensively they were better, the better team structure, better team shape. But they're not creating these opportunities. And when you have a player like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, you can pretty much just give it to him. And he's so physically imposing that it can create something out of nothing. That's not Chicharito Hernandez. He's never been the player who's going to really help you construct the goal. He's going to finish that play. This is worrisome for the Galaxy because the type of players they have in that midfield, the type of players they have in that rotation, aren't really the type of players that are going to facilitate Chicharito, the type of service that he needs. But this isn't a collective effort. This is all Chicharito Hernandez learning how to adapt to what is Major League Soccer and adapt to what his new teammates are nowadays and try to find more opportunities. But in two games, two shots on goal, less than 30 touches each game, something needs to change, something needs to give. Ale, how would you rate how Chicharito's played through 180 minutes? I don't know. Has he played? Has he been out on the field? <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, I don't put this on Chicharito Hernandez whatsoever. I put this on how incredibly slow and predictable, excruciatingly slow, the LA Galaxy play through the midfield. And once they get into the final third, it's just one sideways pass after another. It's a team that doesn't threaten him behind. It's a team that doesn't threaten down the wings. There is no service com coming from wide areas. There are no through balls being played. The balls are sideways and back and sideways and back. And eventually you put pressure in your back line to defend and keep a zero. They don't do that. They end up losing the game. If you look at the one single goal that they have scored, well, it's no surprise that it comes from a long ball over the top, a quick outlet by David Bingham, 60 yards, that skips everybody, finds the run of Christian Pavon, who then on an individual effort scores a goal that he did against Houston. My concern, if I were Chicharito Hernandez, is to say, wait a minute, hold on a second. Where is the service going to come from? Because if you're depending on me to get a hold of the ball, turn, do a couple of stepovers, dribble two guys, and then score a goal myself, we're not going to score goals. This is not what I do, it's not what I did at my very best. At, at the top, at the pinnacle of my career, I wasn't doing that. And so to expect that from Chicharito, it's not going to happen. And so it really is a question to the rest of the group that is supposed to provide the service and really to Guillermo Barros Queloto as well in saying, okay, how do we set up a team that, yes, can have a better structure defensively, but let's not sacrifice our ability to create chances. They just haven't created enough chances. It's not like Chicharito Hernandez is missing open goals. That's not happening. And that's really concerning. If you came to me and said, you know what, they've created five quality chances for him and he's missed all of those, I would say, well, Chicharito, there's a problem with confidence. We can address that, if you will. But how do we address the fact that there aren't even chances being put out on the field for Chicharito Hernandez or for anybody else in the LA Galaxy? I get it. Nobody wants to blame Chicharito, but we got to blame somebody here. Herc, who is more responsible for this lack of service to Chicharito? The guys on the field with him or the manager in charge? I'd say it's a little bit more of management. Who put those players on the field? Who constructed this team? Uh, Alejandro's right about how predictable they are and how slow they are in transition. If you look at the players who actually have the ability to beat somebody 1v1 and provide that service, there's probably one on that team, and it's Cristian Pavon. The rest of the players will play well within lines and probably combine and construct in the final third, but not necessarily to the play that suits Chicharito Hernandez. Now, I do see service coming from wide areas, but when Chicharito Hernandez is the only guy in the box that maybe threatens with a the type of players defensively and the size of this league that they have, uh, Alexander Katai on one end and Christian Pavone on the other end, aren't necessarily tiptoeing that line within the box and helping out with the movement. So something has to give. And with every team that I've ever seen that's been successful offensively in Major League Soccer, when you have that type of service, there's usually more than one player in that box. There's usually more than one player threatening. Alejandro's very right about why he says this team's very predictable. Now that's on Guillermo Barros-Scoloto and that's on Dennis De Close. You can't construct a team around Chicharito Hernandez without service. You've got plenty of guys who can take care of the ball, but in open field, Behind that defensive line, you barely have one player, and that's Christian Pavone. Until Christian Pavone and Chirito Hernandez get on the same page, it's going to be very difficult for 
the LA Galaxy and for Chicharito Hernandez. This isn't a player, like Alejandro said, that can really create for himself. He's never been that guy. That's been his downfall with the Mexican national team. This is why Raul Jimenez is oftentimes his downfall. More He's the leading scorer because Mexican he does a lot history. more in the construction of that play. If, if I can just me? say, if I can just say for a second, right? When when we say that there has been service from wide areas. My point to that would be that that service is also predictable because the play leading up to that Correct. has been 10 passes that have gone sideways and back. Then the ball gets played out wide. Then everybody in the stadium and everybody on the field and everybody watching on TV knows that there's going to be a floated ball into the box. And so if everybody knows that, then guess who knows that as well? The back line, who are able to attack the ball in a way in which they can clear chances away. The LA Galaxy right now are not a good team. They are not. And this is regardless of whether Chicharito Hernandez is out on the field or not. What we are finding out, if people didn't know this from before and maybe they need a reminder, is that Zlatan Ibrahimovic was and is a generational talent. And so when you give the ball to a generational talent, he can do away with a lot of the shortcomings that you had offensively as a team. He could do that even at his advanced age, and he could do that because he is that special. Chicharito is not that player. If you had that expectation that this is what Chicharito was going to be for the LA Galaxy, you were wrong from the very beginning. It's a different standard of player, it's a different player, and it's a player that needs others around him to provide him with enough service so that he can score the goals and do the job that he's very good at doing. Ale, you just asked kind of tongue-in-cheek if Chicharito had been playing throughout the first 180 minutes. I can confirm he did play. I can also confirm he didn't speak to the media after the LA Galaxy's uh, latest defeat. Herc, you're in Los Angeles. You understand this dynamic uh, very well. Is there anything more cowardly for a player to do than to find time to go on SportsCenter and Ahora o Nunca and Jimmy Kim Alive, but then after a loss, not be able to talk to the media? I spoke to the Galaxy and they said this was a club decision. I spoke to Major League Soccer and they said that they were going to speak to the player and speak to the club. Now, when I spoke to the Galaxy and, and Major League Soccer, they mentioned the coronavirus. They mentioned canceling what was the locker room visits by the press. I think a lot of people are blowing this out of proportion. I mean, it, he's been made available every day after practice. This is the one time he missed. And to you, the Galaxy said to it's a club you, decision. Not, to I get you, what you're trying to do, you Seb. Show. I really do because not that's to your style. Not to the 50 people that showed but up to talk to come him. Come on, Seb. Because he that's show why up he's for here. Presser? He's only is here that, for is that 50 really people that doing? show up every day. He doesn't show up for he's a presser and you're up in arms? Is this what we're doing? This is what you want to be? This is, who, this is really what you want to go after? A guy who doesn't show up for a presser. Listen, he's not the first and he's not the last. Carlos Villa didn't show up for a presser last night after that 3-3 draw with uh, the Philadelphia Union. I don't hear you up in arms about that. You you're know, right, you're right. Major League Soccer doesn't need attention. You're right, Major League Soccer doesn't need any attention from his stars. But he didn't, stars. Show, up right. he didn't Ale, show up to a presser. He didn't show up to a presser. Get over it. I think a lot of people in the press need to sit back and relax. This is two games, it's one presser. Now, if there is a trend continuing, then it's cause for alarm. There was but a relax. trend last year with Carlos Vela. You can't Vela. go crazy after Carlos two games, Vela one presser. <laughs> no, no. LeBron James agreed to more pregame interviews last year than <laughs> Carlos Vela. Are we talking about That's LeBron a problem. James now? That's a problem. Ale, big deal or not? Are we not? talking about LeBron James now with Chicharito Hernandez? <laughs> hey, <laughs> Seb, come to? Seb, Seb, you got to calm down, bro. You're nah, too... people eat off of this. I there know, are people in the media who I, I live know, off of whether he shows I up know, or not. I know, but you're too young to get so worked up over this sort of stuff, Seb. All right, you got to let it go, man. Uh, you're newly married. Look at the vein Utilize on that neck. this positive energy and take that home with you. You don't need this negativity in your life, Seb. You just bought a house. There's enough stress in your life for you to then get all worked <laughs> up about this. Okay, Seb? Just relax. Over Come chicharito. Down. No, I, I, I would say this. I do think that if, if it is your job to show up for, for the press conference, you go and you answer your couple of questions and you move on with your life. Those, those questions will be easily answerable by anybody who has been in the game as long as Javier Hernandez has been. So you can, you can, you can bob and weave, you can give general answers and move on with your life. Now, what I would say is the people in that room, those 50 people that you're talking about, Seb, are they going to be satisfied with the uh, company answer, with just essentially the package answers that, we are, that I could sit in that press conference and give on behalf of Javier Hernandez? 
I don't think so. So if he's not going to give you anything, are you really making a difference? I do think that if that's his responsibility, he's got to show up. But let's not get crazy and say, please, take care of yourself, man. I, I worry about you. I'm concerned about you. Look, I like to think that we're pretty honest here on this program. You saying you worry about me, Ale, is the least honest thing <laughs> I've heard in quite some time. We'll see if the uh, LA Galaxy can turn Well, you're right about that. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a, uh, a nice reprieve this weekend as they head to Fort Lauderdale to face Inter-Miami. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.